They are jaw-dropping allegations. A woman says she was gang-raped by uh, P. Diddy and his entourage and drugged as well more than six years ago in California. Ashley Parham says the terrifying evening involved a knife fight with Diddy in which she grazed him and being shot at before she could escape with her life. Ashley Piram is the newest plaintiff to file suit against Diddy, but she's not only suing him, she's suing a few others. She's suing Christina Coram, Shane Pierce, and three John Doe's and one Jane Doe. And for those who don't know what that means, John Doe and Jane Doe is just a fictitious name that the government uses when they're either trying to conceal a name or the person's real name is unknown at that moment. What we do know is that Christina is Diddy's right-hand woman and actually works for Diddy. And Shane, unfortunately, is someone that actually considered to be a friend of Ashley's back in February of 2018. Shane and Ashley met. Um, he actually came to her rescue as she was getting into some sort of altercation at the bar with another man. After the ordeal was done, the fight was done, a bunch of people were just standing outside, hanging out, talking, and randomly, Shane decides to call Diddy. I don't know why. Um, he, I guess he was just trying to say, hey, look at me, look who I know, uh, kind of like, I'm important, you know, whatever the case was. Ashley is unimpressed and makes a statement on how she believes that Diddy has something to do with Tupac's death. Diddy overheard that comment being still on FaceTime with Shane. Diddy overheard that comment that Ashley made and told her that she would pay for saying that. After this whole ordeal at the bar, Shane and Ashley stayed friends. They kept in touch. And about a month later in March, Shane actually calls Ashley and Ashley goes to his rescue this time. He was calling her because... He needed help taking his cancer medication. He said he was too weak to even open the bottle. After she arrives, they make small talk. He tells her how he just got this new car and how he would love to take her to a spin. However, if you think about it, hindsight is twenty twenty always, but this is the biggest sign. How are you too weak to open up a simple little bottle, but you have enough energy to bring me out for a spin in your new car? It doesn't make any sense. Once back inside his apartment, she notices that he leaves the door slightly open. So she mentions it to him and he says, oh, you know, that door, it's tripping. It's been tripping. Maintenance is supposed to come take care of it. Blase, blase, blase. And it kind of left off like that. Like, hey, they should be fixing it soon. About 10 minutes later, though, guess who comes in that same exact door? You guessed it, Diddy. But he doesn't come alone. He actually comes with Christina, his bodyguard. The bodyguard is named as John Doe number one in this. Also, Jane Doe. Uh, so there is another woman. We don't know who. Uh, Ashley says the only thing that she really remembers is that she appeared to be in her 30s with blonde hair. And then John Doe number two and three are there. So supposedly a friend of Diddy and Shane's and also uh, Diddy's driver. But according to the lawsuit, John Doe number three, the driver, never came inside. He stayed in the car, never stepped foot into the apartment. Ashley states that Diddy immediately started to antagonize her about the Tupac statement that she made while he was on FaceTime about a month earlier. He started walking towards her with a knife, held it up to the right side of her face and said that he should give her a Glasgow smile. If you guys don't know what that is, it usually is when the victim gets cut on each side of their smile all the way to their ears, kind of looking like a joker. Christina urged Diddy to stop insinuating that this whole thing was not a good idea, that they should just sell her to one of their clients telling Ashley to shut up. If you don't shut up, basically I'm gonna ship you out and your family's never gonna see you again. Diddy and Shane then proceeded to strip Ashley of all her clothing. They pulled a bottle out of a bag and started pouring that liquid all over her. At first she was in fear, thinking that it was a chemical 
but then she soon realized that it was just baby oil. Well, what we know now about the baby oil makes complete sense. Hindsight is always 20, 20. Uh, Diddy instructed Christina to insert what looked like a syringe into Ashley's vag. Something went wrong though. Whatever was a part of their plan with this syringe, Christina wasn't doing it right. So Diddy started inserting it into her himself. Christina and Jane Doe decided to leave. So now alone is just Ashley, Diddy, Shane, and John Doe 1 and 2. So what did Diddy do next? Well, he picks up a television remote that's nearby and starts violently inserting it into Ashley. Ashley is hysterically crying, screaming, begging for help, begging them to stop. And Diddy instructs Shane to flip her over on her stomach because he did not want to hear her hysterics. So Shane flipped her over so he didn't see any of it, didn't hear any of it. She, he just wanted it out of, out of sight, out of mind type of situation. So Shane put a pillow over her head to muffle some of the screams. And then Shane proceeded to R word her after Shane, then Diddy, then John Doe number one, and then John Doe number two all took turns doing the same thing to her. She also stated that before John Doe started, he doused her with more baby oil and then jumped on her back as if she was some sort of slip inside, which knocked the wind out of her because this John Doe is a little larger than life and the poor girl couldn't breathe. He also stated that when John Doe number one was doing this to her, that Diddy was actually sitting in a chair in the room, masturbating and recording this whole thing go down. During this whole ordeal, John Doe's phone falls near the bed and I guess she tries to reach for it. And what does Diddy do? He laughs. He laughs and he makes a little smart comment saying, I own you now. She said by the time it was over, she could not move and she had no control over her bodily functions. At some point, Christina comes back into, into the room and starts giving Ashley an IV. At that point, she tried to escape. Diddy reportedly mocked her before offering her a bag. Yeah, he offered her money to stay quiet. What else is new? He also allegedly threatened her family, implying she would not be believed by the authorities if she tried. So if she tried to report the incident, good luck because nobody's going to believe you because I'm Diddy. Ashley further claims that she reported the incident to local police, including the Contra Costa County Sheriff's Department, but felt that there was no investigation followed because I guess it's Diddy, right? Diddy's team calls all of these allegations and lawsuits a smear campaign. This case adds to a series of other legal battles Combs has faced and continues to face. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Guys, please subscribe, comment, like the video. It's free. Thank you. Peace.